So today guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a fire and it's going to be an elevated fire. It's the type of thing that you would use if there's been heavy rain in a swampy, boggy type area where you need to raise the fire off the ground so you can do a bit of cooking. So at the side there's going to be a little working area, a little working space. And as far as I'm aware, I don't think this has been shown before on YouTube. But I just want to show you this today so you've got an idea of what to do if you're ever in a situation where you need to build a fire off the ground. So stick with us guys, let's get cracking. So the light's a little bit funky, but I'm going to try and do what I can given the type of uh, light, lighting conditions that we've got. The, uh, the cloud is very thick at the moment, that's why it's as dark as it is. So um, I don't think there's going to be snow today, but the temperature's just above minus. So today the equipment that I've got with me is the Ultraforce Axe. This is the 18 inch model with a one and three quarter pound head. So the shaft is 18 inch. Then I've got the Silky Big Boy and I've also got the Silky Gun Boy as well. So some of the things that I'm gonna to need to look for first are straight Y sticks. Basically I need round about six of them. Two of them need to be extended because so I'm gonna put a piece of timber across uh, to hang food on. So that's got to be above the fire. Uh, and then I'm going to need a load of straight logs uh, and a couple of cross beams as well to get it all working together. If you've ever been in a swamp or you've visited a flooded area, you'll often see trees that have fallen, laid down or floating. And you'll often find branches that are above the water and they're the type of branches that you need to take. As I harvest the deadwood from this spruce I'm taking the branches or the limbs from the top half. These top limbs have been exposed to the air so any rain that's happened over the past few days the air and the wind will have dried those branches out. All the branches below they'll be picking up moisture from the ground so they'll be wet So I've spotted a dead pine. I can harvest this, utilize it for the cross beams and some of the logs that I'm gonna to need to make the work top. Before felling the tree, I checked out the bark and the bark was coming off revealing the cambium layer. This is an indication that the tree is dead or dying. You could see this later on in the day when I was processing firewood. By the way, as you can see, the bark's coming off, the bark's just peeling off, that's one of the signs you know it's dead, it's a dead piece of wood. I'm doing a rough measurement of around two and a half feet. The silky big boy is just over 30 inches in full length, which is just over two and a half feet. I used about 16 pieces at this length, and this is something you've got to keep in mind when you're thinking about the size of your workspace and the size of the fire that you're going to be making. The bigger the workspace, the greater the fire, the more energy you've got to expend.
do that a bit more. At this point I'm just dressing the wood, getting off any uh, sharp thorns or bits that are sticking out. And I start to uh, reveal the heartwood of this particular limb. Now it's often mistaken for fatwood, but the bright orange part you can see now is actually the heartwood. And the lighter part is the sapwood, and just underneath the bark you have the cambrium layer. Oh, smell the resin. Beautiful. This fat wood's been harvested from Scott's pine that's been laid here for at least two to three years. It's dry nice. and it smells more like it's paraffin or turpentine. Gonna fire going with that in a minute. One, two, three, four. So the idea guys is to put the stakes in the ground and then we're going to put a cross beam and then we're going to rest these logs and rest these logs across the uh, the two cross beams. So for that I need a suitable ground and this ground here isn't that suitable because there's, a, there's something there maybe this might be all right here might be good. Right. Put that under there, just to level it off. Now we start placing this, the piece of logs, the logs on top, just to uh, make our flat surface, our working surface as well. Slowly but surely, it's all coming together. Right, so this is where we're going to put the fire, and this is going to be the work surface. So, what I could do with getting a couple more logs just to be on the safe side. But you may be thinking, how is he going to put a fire on there? Won't it burn through? Wouldn't it make sense that heat, oxygen, fuel, it's just going to catch fire well we need to cover this area here give it a protective layer so that when the the heat hits some of the surface it won't be hot enough to actually burn the wood nice and sharp So yeah, get all the, as much of the uh, dead bark off as you can. Make yourself a little few curls if you wish, just for the fun of it. Now for the next part, you're gonna need 
some sort of digging tool to uh, to dig up some soil because that's what we're going to need now proper soil not duff because duff what that'll do is uh, it won't protect the wood you need proper soil clay soil if, if you can so I'm going to dig down get myself some decent soil and then cover the area where the fire is going to lay first of all I'm going to put some moss down so the uh, So the soil doesn't fall through. That should be fine. Now we can place the uh, now we can place the soil on top. So I managed to find some soil here, and we use that this perfect part of it. Oh yeah, good stuff. See the duff there, how deep it goes. But this is what's going to stop the fire from burning through the, uh, the wood. So I'll collect a load of this. Right, as you can see now we've made the base there that's going to be good enough to hold our fire right now we've got that the base done it's time to uh, collect some wood for the fire and get some food on the go once I've cleaned this beautiful spade Is it a spade or a shovel? Trick question. Do you know the answer? A spade, you dig. A shovel, you move. That's how I understand it, guys. If you know anything different, leave a comment below. Let me know your views. This is definitely a shovel come spade type thing. Dig and move. <sighs> Nicely tucked away. So I've got my little twigs there already. All my wood's prepared. Managed to find some birch. So we'll see what we can get together with that. properly this is the new ultra force knife that I'm using very sharp I've got to say which is good what you need comes with its own ferro rod so let's see there you go good let's get this Some birch, more birch on there. 
get this fire going. We've not got much light left at this moment in time, so one needs to build this fire rapido. Yeah, didn't let me down on that. Very good. Right, let's put that on there. Really get the fire going. There you go. One fire. Happy days. Happy days, guys. Let's see how this works out, eh? Hey! <laughs> Got to be controlled to a certain degree, so got to manage it. And that is what I'll do. think that's not too bad is it now let's just see how this works if it all goes up in flames then one might look a fool but it's certainly worth giving a go might as well get the pans ready can also get a brew on So this is the titanium titanium frying pan I've got. I can do some uh, eggs on that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that'll be done in two ticks. nice there's many different practical uses for this one if you like me and you get a bit old and you you don't want to be bending down all the time then this is great I can spread some of this along because all we want basically is coals hot coals so I'm gonna give my titanium frying pan a go now just to be on the safe side. Get a brew on whilst I'm here. Near some of the trees bending. Remember, you're just managing that fire. We're starting to sizzle, boys and girls, starting to sizzle. As you can see, it's not, it's still in one piece. I'll give Badgie an egg. She likes an egg or two. This isn't the best method, I think, uh, for cooking bacon. Because at the top here, it's going to remain un uncooked. So I may have to revert to 
sticking them in the frying pan, really. Underneath there, but I'm not sure what you can see there, guys. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, it ain't burning. I think what we're going to do here, Badgie, is I'm going to put this bacon in the frying pan. Cheers guys. Ah, that's tasty. So it's nice to get out every now and again. The bacon's just cooking. Ah, the black pudding's done and the eggs are just right. And did you watch my last video? The one prior to this when I walked to um, Kinderdown Fall, beautiful mystical place. And uh, it's somewhere where I go every year as a bit of a pil pilgrimage thing after Christmas and New Year, just to burn off the fat and break in the new year. So I hope you enjoyed it. It was a good walk. You're looking at round about 16K. I don't know what that is in miles, like 10 miles, 10 and a half miles, something like that. I set off at, I think it was uh, 11 o'clock, actual footfall, boom, on the path, the Pennine Way, and uh, got back for about half five, so, and I've done a fair bit of filming, as you saw in the video. A lot of filming with um, the drone and uh the lighting was terrible lighting was terrible and it has been pretty uh dull over the past few days so i just hope this the, the lighting on this um video turns out better anyway enough jibber jabber it's time for me and the badgie to chow down that's if this uh raised fire hasn't completely burnt down at the time that I've been talking to you. So anyway guys, any suggestions that you have, any comments about this video, anything anything that you think, well, maybe you could have done that differently or adaptations or whatever it may be, uh, you let me know. Inbox me or comment in the comment section. Right guys, now on to the food. The main purpose for us being here today, or for me being here, me and the badgie. Took me eye off the ball, guys. Boint the bacon. Boint the bacon. That's not too bad. But guys, you get the point, don't you? As soon as I've finished here eating this lovely lunch, or late lunch, we'll inspect the wood. Hey, badgie. So once we peel back the protective layer, we'll see whether it's scorched any of the wood. And um, this will give us an indication of how many times you could actually use this type of fire. How many times you could actually use this type of system, should I say. Because uh, I have no doubt you can have, you could probably keep on doing this as long as you look after and manage the fire and um, you create and you keep on um, putting a fresh bed down 
uh, slightly moist. Not too moist, because that, what that'll do is it'll draw the moisture up. The fire will suck up the moisture. You'll end up putting the fire out. So you want it dank or damp, but not sodden. We've not used one bit of paracord, cordage, twine. This is freestanding. Let us have a little look at what lays beneath the fire. Other than the mud. Yeah, you can feel there's warmth on the logs, but there's no damage. There's no damage to any of these logs, as far as scorch marks or burn marks. It's getting very dark now. Fire's totally out. It's time to head back. Well, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you've enjoyed. If you can, guys, share this video. People who have, are in flooded areas, flooded environments, uh, will find it particularly useful. So until next time, guys, you take care, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao for now.